Right. Well, everybody, uh, the last time we chatted, I was showing you the mace ball that I made. Uh, that was Keith here. Now, um, this is a 10-pound bowling ball. I had attached it to a 4-foot long piece of steel fitters, uh, steel pipe. Steel fitters? Gas fitters. Steel pipe. I'm alright. And uh, we made ourselves a gata. Now I had a slight little accident with uh, my last one, my first try. When you put the pipe in, you I was only, only put it thread deep, which was only uh, about an inch. Not even an inch. Maybe less than half an inch. And uh, due to the weight of the ball, it actually cracked the resin. Uh, the, the epoxy itself held but the ball itself the uh, snapped. Uh, so I was able to salvage it and I've actually used the one inch spade bit and drilled down uh, over two inches into the ball now. So when I fit that new pipe in I'll actually be able to go a lot deeper and uh, it should be a lot easier. So uh, today we're going to spend some time and I'm actually going to show you how to do this and the tools that you'll need and to show you the finished product. This is my second ball that I had. This is only a seven pound one, but there's that four foot piece of pipe. And you can see the epoxy has set on this bad boy. So it's actually a lot easier to use, uh, much lighter. Great little workout tool. So stay tuned and uh, we're gonna make ourselves a gata. Really great workout tool, excellent for the uh, for the core, good for the shoulders, uh, good stability as well. So first you need a bowling ball. Now like I said before, this is Keith. I'm naming him Keith 2 because of the first accident. This is part 2. Uh, it doesn't matter which one you use. This is a 10 pound ball. Delilah is a 7 pound ball. What you have to do, you, you already have an existing holes usually with the uh, thumb holes or the finger holes. What you'll need is a one inch spade bit. Now the original directions I had were a 15 by 16 or 15 sixteenths spade bit. Uh, it made it really difficult so I really do suggest a one inch spade bit and you're gonna have to drill down I'll say a good two inches into the ball. Uh, you may get a little chipping around the edge of the resin. If you can do it with a hole cutter saw by all means feel free but you want to go a good two inches into the saw. All right, you're going to have to hold that because the, the spade bit will grip the ball quite easily. You get yourself from any hardware store. This is a four foot piece of gas fitters steel pipe. It actually has the, um, the threading already on it. Now when you buy this, it's going to have a very thin layer of oil, of, uh, of uh, yeah, a grace, uh, a film of this oil. You're going to have to take a rag and really do a good job. Take off these caps. Do a really good job, I'm not sure if you can see it, of getting all of that off of there. Because later on, uh, if you decide to uh, paint this, which I suggest is a good idea, because this just gets too slippery, um, you're going to need, uh, it won't stick with that oil on there. So. Without any crude jokes, you're going to slide and you get yourself, okay, so four foot, okay. Uh, the other tool that you're going to need, obviously you have your bowling ball, you have your pipe, you're going to need epoxy. Now I like this Gorilla Glue epoxy, it's extremely strong. All I do is empty about half of this. You can see I've used it once before, obviously on Keith. Um, I just pour it onto here, give it a good mix, really good. Make sure it's mixed really, really well. Uh, I have myself some of my kids' craft popsicle sticks. <clears throat> see, and I apply this all inside that hole really liberally. Don't worry about if it oozes out the side. You really do want to get a lot on it. Um, it's better to have more epoxy than less. Uh, you're going to end up doing about that much of the pipe. Okay, it's going to go into the ball. Um, what I did was I actually got a steel grinder and I just ground and ground and ground and actually cut into the, the eye. So give it a good edge on this smooth surface and 
put a bunch of slice marks with the grinder right in it and this just allowed me a chance to to use the epoxy and, and so it would hold up uh, really well so essentially you're gonna have to make sure that that hole is wide enough to fit that pipe all the way down now what I use is a, a rubber mallet uh, once I'm ready to go and I hammer that down and in once that's in and you've got the epoxy all in there you can smooth it out all you want but just know as soon as that hardens you're not going to be able to chip away at some of that stuff so if you like your mace ball looking nice and pretty you're going to have to do that before that sets and hardens and essentially that's it there's not much to it uh, I let it cure for about 24 hours uh, and then you're ready to go so this one is theoretically ready to go all I have to do is add the glue all right we'll see how it turns out well uh, so I've prepped this ready to go it's all wiped down all the uh, very thin layer of um, oil has been taken off of it you can see I've taken the grinder to it I've just added a little bit of edge Let's see if you can see that better uh, just a little bit of edge to some of this uh, this will just allow the um, the epoxy to grip just a little bit stronger the inside of the ball is extremely smooth uh, outside of the threads I just wanted to give it a little bit more something to grip onto. Now uh, another tool that I, I ended up purchasing uh, now this is a piece of um, one inch like I said gas fitters steel pipe so this is a one inch or three quarters excuse me this is not one inch this is three quarters uh, cap this is for the end of it so when I'm done this end piece is gonna go on here because that plastics not gonna last a long time this is the piece that's obviously going inside the ball. So I apologize if I said that earlier. This is not one inch, this is three quarters. Okay, The bit that you're going to need to go into the actual ball itself okay, is a one inch spade bit. Okay, And that's what I used to go in there. Okay, And that's how I poured out my ball. So it, uh, it's good to go. All right, so essentially, the next thing I'm going to do, create the epoxy. I'm going to uh, apply it liberally, and then we're going to fasten it, all right? Okay, so I've added uh, the epoxy right into it. I'm going to stir, whoa, come on over, really, really well. Now, on the first ball that I did, I actually used an epoxy that had a color to it, a gray color. Uh, the sole reason for that is, is it told me whether or not it was mixed. Um, one's a really dark gray and one was a light white color. So when I mixed it together it was supposed to make a nice gray. Um, I really can't stress enough, the epoxy does have to be thoroughly mixed because if it's not, you don't want a 10 pound ball crashing down on your head as you, as you, uh, you do this. So, looks like we are good to go it's looking nice and goopy all right it is making a real mess here so here's my ball okay I'm gonna add it like I said nice and liberally all right I'm sure some of my friends will have some comments on this, uh, but you really do gotta get it really nice and wet with the uh, with the epoxy. All right, cover the entire thing, lubricate the whole inside of the hole. Please keep the jokes to yourself. You know who you are. Okay, apply it, apply it again very liberally to the the end of the the bar. Okay. Hopefully I have got enough. I used half of a container of this Gorilla Grip uh, epoxy. You want to try and add a little bit more to where there's not a lot of thread uh, or where those grinds are. And that's just because uh, it's going to need to grip a lot better than where the uh, the other pieces are. Okay, let's get this in. 
and any and all. Moment of there we go. So basically what I do is I'm rotating it just a little bit, just back and forth. Uh, this will allow, obviously, for that epoxy to really find all the nooks and crannies. Really can't find a better way of doing this without someone finding this vulgar, but what can you do? Okay, using the last of the epoxy. Okay, that's what it is. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna let this sit upright. All right, I'm just gonna let this sit upright for 24 hours. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the shed because it looks like it's gonna rain tonight. Uh, and that's it. So next time we uh, talk, we're going to uh, swing it around my head and we'll see if Keith too can live up to his sister Delilah. Alright, so thanks a lot. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at the, uh, the link that's listed below. Alright, cheers.